um, in the last video, I showed uh, this particular um, identity here, which writes the euler mascheroni constant, the gamma, which is equal to 0.577 in terms of an integral expression. Okay, And like I said, we are now going to use this to tackle some uh, integrals. Okay, So the first thing that we're going to solve is an integral that looks like this, e to the minus a x of ln x dx integrated from 0 to infinity. So now, we would like to use our identity to solve this integral. So obviously, the first line of attack, since our identity uh, writes the uh, gamma in terms of uh, two terms, what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to break down this integral from 1, uh, sorry, from 0 to 1, which uh, because our identity here is from 0 to 1. So that is e to the minus x ln x dx plus the rest of the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the minus x ln x dx. Now, what we're going to do is we look at the first term and we evaluate this integrals uh, uh, separately, uh, uh, first term and then uh, second term, okay? So let's uh, tackle the first term. What we can do is, um, so if you look at that integral from 0 to 1 of e to the minus x ln x dx, so there's actually a very uh, awesome trick that we can do here. We can write e to the x in terms of a derivative, okay? I want to write this as negative derivative of e to the minus x minus 1, okay? So that, so that one, um, this one, obviously, the, when you take the derivative of this, it is exactly e to the minus x. Now, why am I writing it like that? Okay? I'm doing it because, in hindsight, if you look at the uh, value of the gamma here, it has 1 minus e to the minus y. So here you have a negative sign. So this is actually just 1 minus e to the uh, minus x, right, if you multiply the negative sign in. Okay? So I want to do that, and then now we can uh, utilize integration by parts. So with this, uh, with this, uh, what do you call this, equality here, we can now write the first term as the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the minus x ln x dx. Okay, I can write that as negative integral from 0 to 1 of the derivative of the quantity e to the minus x minus 1 with respect to x ln x dx okay and obviously when you have a derivative inside one of the terms is in the forms of a derivative the best thing that you do is you do integration by parts so we let u equals ln x so that our du is 1 over x dx and then of course dv is the rest of the integrand without the ln x so this is derivative with respect to x of e to the minus x minus 1 dx and obviously your v is e to the minus uh, x minus 1 okay and then of course integration using integration by parts the original integration e to the minus x ln x dx which note is this one so you have a minus sign here negative integral from 0 to 1 of the derivative of e to the minus x minus 1 ln x okay so integration by parts you have uv so u times v and then evaluated at the uh at the boundaries but note that you have a minus sign here so the whole thing has a minus sign of uv so ln x multiplied by e to the minus x minus 1 evaluated from uh, 0 to 1 okay minus integral from 0 to 1 of v which is this one du which is this one all right so e to the minus x minus 1 and then 1 over x dx let's look at the boundary term note that the boundary term at 1 ln of x is 0 so it vanishes at 1 at 0 e to the minus x is 1 1 minus 1 is 0 so it also vanishes in other words the boundary term vanishes and the whole first term becomes 
So the minus sign here, you can uh, distribute it here to make it plus. But what I'm going to do is I'll retain that minus sign and then uh, distribute the negative sign inside so that the inside term becomes 1 minus e to the x over x dx. Why did I do that? Aha, because look at the first term in our gamma. It looks like that, right? But we're not yet done. We still have the second term, okay? The second term is, of course, if you recall, um, this guy right here, integral from 1 to infinity of e to the minus x ln x. So integral from 1 to infinity of e to the minus x ln x dx. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use, again, integration by parts. I let u equals ln x so that when I take the derivative, I get a 1 over x. Okay, why do we want that? Because the second term in our identity has 1 over y, which is uh, very convenient, right? Uh, dv is, of course, the rest of the terms. That is e to the minus x dx. Therefore, your v is negative e to the minus x, okay? So the whole uh, second term becomes integral from 1 to infinity of e to the minus x ln x dx you have uh, uv, so uh, ln of x, v is negative e to the minus x, evaluated from 1 to infinity minus, but note that, so minus integral of v du, note that our v has a negative sign, so this becomes plus integral from 1 to infinity of v, which is e to the minus x, du, which is 1 over x dx, okay? Now, again, let's look at the boundary term. At x equals 1, ln of 1 vanishes. At infinity, e to the minus infinity is also 0. So this whole thing vanishes. And we have what is left as integral from 1 to infinity of e to the minus x over x dx. So now, if you could combine the first term and the second term all in all, the original integral, from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x, ln of x, dx. This is now equal to the first term, which we've shown to be the negative integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus e to the minus x over x, dx. And the second term, which is the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the minus x over x, dx. Okay? But look, this whole thing, okay, is actually... The definition of the euler mascheroni constant, but for a minus sign. Note that our answer is it has negative here, it is plus here. So if you just take the minus sign outside, it means that this whole thing is just the negative of the euler mascheroni constant. So this definite integral here, e to the minus x, ln of x from 0 to infinity, is just equal to negative 0.577. That's very nice. How about another integral? Why don't we consider the integral... Okay, this one looks even more curious. Integral from 0 to 1 of ln of negative ln of x dx. Okay, so this looks, um, this, it, it looks tempting to do uh, substitution. Uh, let's do that. Let u equals negative ln x so that the whole thing inside, so the whole thing will become ln of u. And then uh, that implies that e uh, to the minus u is equal to x. And of course, uh, taking the derivative of both uh, sides, e to the minus u du is equal to dx. Okay, so let, let's substitute all those things to the original integral. ln of minus ln of x dx that becomes the integral. So the limits first. When x is 0 ln of 0 is again minus infinity, but you have a negative sign outside, so that becomes positive infinity. ln of 1 is 0, so u becomes 0. You have ln minus ln x is your u, so that becomes ln of u. dx here becomes negative e to the minus u du. Okay? You have a negative sign here, so we can uh, reverse the limits of the integration. 0 to infinity, e to the minus u, ln of u, 
du. But wait a minute, this looks familiar. I, I, we know that we know the value of this one. Why? This is exactly the integral that we evaluated last time. This one, and we know that that is equal to the negative of the Euler Mascheroni constant. Therefore, it follows that the integral from 0 to 1 of ln of negative ln x is also the negative of the Euler Mascheroni constant. Okay? So, which is so amazing, right? You have like curious looking function ln of minus ln x integrated from 0 to 1. Under a curious change of variables, it becomes something familiar which we've solved uh, before. So, that makes me uh, curious. Let's see. Let's actually try plotting. Uh, their graphs so what they look like because you know the interpretation of integration is an area so if we look at the let me see how we do is uh, let's plot uh, e to the minus u so that's uh, e uh, to the minus x multiplied by ln of x let's see how it looks like if we plot it together with the logarithm natural logarithm of negative natural logarithm of x okay that looks small let me zoom it in so as you can see um that's our plot obviously the sky blue one here if you can tell is the ln minus ln x because it actually explodes or diverges at uh positive one because ln of one is zero so l uh ln of zero is negative infinity so that's why it's it goes down right there this one actually the blue one this is your e to the minus u ln u okay so what it says is the area of uh, the blue one here the area right here and all the area all the way there up to infinity it has a magnitude of the euler machinal co constant which is cool and that area is also equal to the area here below of the sky blue one added to the area right here okay from uh, zero to one because our limit here is just from zero to one right so that's it so what what we what we've shown is um, we have uh, what do you call this uh, two different integrals which actually I'm I'm cheating a little bit here because under a uh, change of variables they will actually look the same but the nice thing is that we will we were able to evaluate it using the identity for the Euler uh, Mascheroni constant okay so that's it and I hope uh, you learned something new today uh, regarding the Euler Mascheroni constant and how to use it to attack integrals that look like this you divide it into two and then use the identity okay so thank you for watching and please look forward to my next videos